and this is called Arrays. Now Arrays is super useful but you might want <coughs> to watch this a couple of times and it might take a little bit of getting used to. I know it did for me. So let's talk about why what Arrays are useful for because it's hard to understand that and, to, um, and then I'll explain what they are. So way back when we looked at asking for your name, storing it as a variable called name and then being able to print that out. <coughs> If you wanted to get five people's names, you could just create a series of variables, name one, name two, <coughs> and that's fine, but it's a lot of code and there's a much simpler way to do it. So here's the simpler way to do it. It is to run a loop, so i is going to equal one to five, so one, two, three, four, five, and then you put them in that square bracket so that when you run the loop, it's going to say user i, say user one, enter your name. And instead of storing it as you having to say it's name 1, name 2, name 3, mm -hmm. it's name I. So it's a kind of shortcut for that process. And as you can see, it's a much shorter piece of code. And shorter code is better because it runs faster and it's easier to fix. So, let's run this code and just see it in action. So I'll copy it and throw it over to my compiler. Got something in there from earlier. Okay, nice simple code running a loop from 1 to 5, asking user, and I'm going to put a space there, and in fact I'm going to make a little change here. Rather than saying user, I'm going to say student, uh, student1, enter name. Now name's going to be stored as name brackets i, so it's name1, name2, name3. Then we finish that loop, and then we say hello, and we run it again. Uh, and in fact, let's say, hello, comma, students. And then we're going to have run another little loop and spit mm -hmm. out name with the brackets for i. So it'll run through 1 to 5 again. So let's see how that works. So we run the program. Student 1, enter name. Let's call student 1 Smokies, because that's the cat you just heard. Then let's go for Billy, my greyhound. Let's go for Cricket, who's a pretend dog. Let's go for Indiana, who's brown, pointy, and unfortunately deceased. And Emmy Lou, who is black, kind of pointy, and unfortunately also deceased. Run it. Hello students, Smokey, Billy, Cricket, Indiana, Emmy Lou. So, we were able to store all that information, those five variables, but without having to actually manually make a name for each of them. So, we'll just close that up, and we'll jump back to the PDF. So, here. That's fine. What we can do is actually throw in a little bit of code on that. I'm not going to do it here, but you could. You could throw that into the program we just used so that you'd have a comma before the end, because that's what we do in English. We don't just list people's names. We have and, and then we have the person's name, and that's what that little bit of code there does. So, what you can also do is you can use a name in there, uh, or a word in there, not just numbers. So you can say, enter your name, which will be saved as user name. So, you know, when I put this in, the variable will actually be created as user mark. <coughs> and then it will be user and then the age. So, it will store those as things and it will then be able to spit them back out again. And again, I won't actually have to say it, tell it at the bottom, um, write a different line of code for each one of those because it will just plug in what I've asked for here. And that might make a bit more sense when you see it in action. So let's jump over to the compiler. So it's going to ask me for my name and that's going to create a variable called user name. Then enter age, user age. Then one saying user city, user zip. Now we don't call it zip, we in fact call it postcode. So enter because you shouldn't fear, you shouldn't be afraid to um, to tamper with your code to make it do what it is that you want to do. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to change the name of the variable and of the text that it shows me, and you'll see why in a minute. Now this is a really interesting bit at the bottom and where the array is super powerful. What info do you want? So it's asking you to type in one of those things, and then it's going to print user plus because it's saving it as index, so what you type in will go to the index and then it'll pull out that piece of information that you asked for. Now, I'll show you what this looks like. So, 
My name is Mr. Omara. My age is 45. Um, I live in Whittington. Um, my postcode is 3219. And what information do I want? Age. So it's said user age and it's pulled out the variable of age. I could do that again and I could ask for any of those variables. Just out of interest, let's run that and see what happens if I ask for a variable that doesn't exist. So, again, my information is the same. I'm 45, I might be 46 by the time you watch this. I'm unlikely to be 44. Uh, postcode 3219, what information do you want? Uh, birthday. Birthday equals, ah, blank, because it in fact doesn't have a variable for that. That's interesting. So, we might even be able to build in an error code there saying if you don't know, say, you know, don't have that piece of information. So, let's just jump across. Yeah, I think that'll do for now. So, build one of these programs and actually make a bit of a change to it so that you can get used to using this and be comfortable with making changes and I look forward to seeing what you make.